Hello everyone, this is Steve from Virginia Beach. I'm back and today is a special day. Today is uh, March 2nd, but today marks two weeks since I had my minimally invasive multi-level spinal fusion, T-lift spinal fusion of my L5 or S1, L5 and L4. And I wanted to come make this video today because the two week journey, it went by so fast I can't even, I'm almost mind blown that it's two weeks. Like it, it literally has me amazed um, that it's been two weeks. It feels like maybe six days or something. But uh, I wanted to come up here and, and give an update as to how things are going in a two week span instead of just like the, the daily thing or whatever. And hopefully don't make it too long, but just, I just wanna flow with it because it's hard to prep for something like this. So February 16th, that was the day um, we decided to, to get it done and it actually got moved up. I, I was supposed to be at the 11 o'clock slot, but I got moved up to show up at six. Hey, let's get on with it. So I had already done a lot of pre-op stuff. I had a video um, of that that I'll get out um, of just things of how I prepared myself leading up to uh, the surgery. If I don't have it, did I make one? I don't know. If I didn't, I will. Um, Cause that was useful. And I think it really helped this, the success rate of what I'm dealing with now as I heal. Um, but I was mentally ready. And I knew uh, like a day or two before I did my walk, which was part of my prep. That last walk I did was very similar to the walk I just completed today. I knew that I was ready. Every step felt unstable, it felt like I was gonna collapse. The pain was firing everywhere. And uh, I don't wanna do a big backstory because you know I had a long backstory, but um, I was in a car accident that basically made everything go nuts. But anyhow, so much instability in my spine and, and I can feel the difference now. It's unbelievable of have, after having this, this multi-level fusion of the stability in my spine versus what it was. I was literally walking around just crushed. So going in, I was a bit nervous, but it was a good nervous. I was ready to take it on. I was ready to just get on the other side, like jump off this, this waterfall, knowing that it's rocky on the bottom and it's all uncertain whether I'm going to hit a rock or whatever. But you can see after the that waterfall and all that chaos, a little bit of a distance out, you can swim to shore and then all you'll see is just green pastures, fruit, all this stuff. It was such a, a vivid uh, mental picture for myself that I was just ready to take that leap of faith. God was in control, I had a lot of prayer leading into it from everywhere. And I really thank everyone that sent out the prayers. So I was nervous, but I wasn't, I was ready. I was ready to go. And um, you do the check-in, and then right away we just went to, like, after I checked in, I went to get prepped up, the IVs, and, and it was a lot of nurses that came in, and it was it was nonstop question, question after question. You know, they want to just double-check, double, triple-check, double, which I was fine with. Um, I was comfortable. I wasn't in any um, discomfort or anything. Well, a little bit. The, the right leg started to act up, but I think just those those tables weren't great. But anyhow, um, I did all the IV prep and everything. And then my wife came back in and, and we were together until it was time for us to go down. And um, I hugged and kissed her and, and I knew it was, I was going to be fine. But they put a little bit of juice in, <laughs> into your IV as you're strolling down. And uh, I, I tell you, I, I, I want to say I, I think I made it until I, I reached the surgery, the surgical room and I think I just went wow because I want to say I recall seeing just this massive operation of just so much stuff and then I was gone and the next thing you know I woke up in the PACU and you know I, I woke up calm I, I I was I didn't know what to anticipate so I was just ready to just you know, all the horror stories, all of this and that. I I just, all right, let's do it. But 
fortunately for me, I had no nausea. I had nothing. I woke up. She said, did I want something to drink? Did I want ginger ale? Did I want water? I said, I'll take both of those. I knocked that down, no problem. But I did realize, you know, when you wake up, you got stuff all over you. I had the, the little oxygen, which they took out right away. I thought I was going to have to do the uh, the breathing tube thing. I never had that. I saw that you needed that or you would get that. They never gave that to me. So maybe my vitals were good while I was under. But they did have a, have a catheter in. And actually, I was glad they did. <laughs> I know that's a TMI thing, but I'm glad I was out when they put it in because they put it in when you're when you were under. But having that in took a little bit of a um, concern away from when I was actually getting ready to start moving. But everything went well in the PACU. I just couldn't leave because they were waiting on my room, but all my vitals, everything was fine. Like they were, they were shocked. They said, wow, we're really surprised of how well you're doing. I wasn't even joking around. So I don't know if that's normal or is it just me, but I felt fine. I didn't I wasn't crazy. I wasn't like giddy or like you'll see people saying crazy stuff. It, none of that. They finally got my room when I rolled on down there. And I was just so glad because in the PACU, I will say the, the most annoying or irritating factor of it was I was sitting there and I wanted to move. I kept saying this. I just felt like I wanted to move, like get up and move. But I did. I knew I could shouldn't or, or I needed to wait. I was just uncomfortable and I wanted to get back to my wife. So when I got in the room, she came in and I was just so happy to see her. And, um, you know, we just hugged, kissed and she was like, wow, you're looking really good. And I said, yeah, I feel I feel pretty good. So we just hung out in the room. And of course, they're just doing their tests. They're doing their vitals. They're checking everything. But I'm, I'm just doing all right. And I just kept saying, I really, really feel like I need to move. I was just uncomfortable being in that one spot. So I want to say about four hours later, we decided to stand up. Um, the PT unit wasn't supposed to come for the next until the next day. But we and the nurse team, we were like, look, let's just stand up. So I, I actually got up. And for the first time when I log rolled, I was anticipating that pain. Like I was anticipating some kind of pain. I, you know, I just had all this hardware and all this stuff go on. But based off of my log roll training from the previous video and all the po or pre op stuff, I I did the roll perfectly. They were really surprised with that, and I didn't feel any pain. I I was shocked. I thought the spine I was gonna feel some. I didn't feel anything. The worst of it was getting up because those beds are soft. So I did feel that, but I got up and I stood for what my wife said for about five minutes and they took the opportunity to wipe me all down and, you know, disinfect anything since I was standing up. And then, yes, it got weak and, you know, I didn't have much strength, but I was standing and I just couldn't believe it. Like, I just couldn't believe how the, the body didn't go. When I stood, it didn't go. It just went, it was solid. So, Try not to make it too long, but I was just really excited about that. I felt good enough. I had a, my son showed up and he visited and they just, they couldn't believe how well I looked. I had a friend show up and we just hung out, but I, I knew the wife was tired. So I told her to go home, just rest, get some sleep. She was home, she would have had that alone time. And I was, I was fine. So she went home and I just had maybe every two or three hours the rotation of the nurses, all they did was just give me a, a little bit of the meds and I, I went to sleep until the next morning. And then the next morning was when the uh, the PT lady came in. It wasn't long. I mean, they were, they were on top of it, probably like seven in the morning. And at that point, you know, I, I was beyond ready to move. I wanted to move since the PACU, but it was time to move. And so I I got up with her assistance, we got all these cords. The cords were more annoying than anything else, I tell you. Um, I got the brace on that they fitted me for and I was just ready. I was ready to go. I had practiced those, you know, how to get up prior to. I'm telling you that really, I need to make that video again. Um, and I stood up with the, the physical therapist and we walked around the room a little bit and she was like, this room's too small for you. You're The way you're moving, you wanna go outside in the hall. 
So we went outside in the hall, grabbed the walker, but we didn't have the walker with the wheels. So I was just kind of clunk, 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 clunk. And she said, you don't, you don't look like you need it. So we, my wife took the walker and her and I just strutted down the hall. Next thing you know, I'm like on my second lap around the unit. Um, and I, I grabbed the walker just because of it was it was achy. It was a surgical thing. It was a uh, you know the legs still weren't used to firing from previous, and all of a sudden I have this activity going on in my legs and through this hardware. So I wanted to grab onto the walker just to be safe, because <laughs> um, I didn't know if my legs were just gonna buckle or what. So we ended up walking and, and got to the stairs, and I just sat for a second, and she was like, "Well, you want to try the stairs?" And I'm like, "Okay, well." Since we're here, <laughs> so walked up the steps, went up five steps, came back down. And it, it was, again, my wife, myself, even the PT lady was just shocked. So we made it back to the room and it just so happens where the neurosurgeon came in and he talked to me a little bit about how well everything went. And he said, based off of this test, examination, all my numbers, everything, he said, you're free to go. It, 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 I'll leave it up to you, but you can be discharged today. And this wasn't even, this was just over 24 hours. And I was like, well, that's amazing. But let me stay because the wife had some plans and we didn't think I would be discharged until Saturday. I went in on Thursday. We thought Saturday, but this was Friday afternoon. So I decided to wait until f after dinner just to make sure well, one, get that catheter out. <laughs> and um, and two, just to make sure I can urinate on my own and, um, you know, keep with the food. I had no food restrictions, so I just ate what they brought. But, you know, constipation-wise was going to be a thing, but I still ate. Um, and I tried to prep my body prior. And then uh, we decided it was best to just go home. It was around 7 o'clock in that evening, Friday evening, and... We, we got dressed, packed up and left and, you know, we got home and I was, I was able to get into the car on my own and, and out, you know, with a little bit of assistance. I walked up the steps in our house to get in and we just started working from there on how to adjust and I was just mind blown. Now, I will say day three was probably the worst of the two weeks because today is two weeks. Day three felt like flat out surgery pain. It wasn't my back at all. It was all surgery. Like somebody took a bat and just hit me in the bones and then took two Rambo knives and shoved it straight down the erectors. It was just pure surgery. And it was a lot also because I had overslept past my, my dosage. So, um, some of the procedure thing, I do have a few notes up here. So that's one of the thing is while you're home, stay on that, that pain man medicine management because you wanna stay ahead of it. You don't wanna get behind because the pain of that was unreal where it was probably an 8.5 out of 10 to me. And it was a very strong one too on a different acute level because it was just the nerves, everything was trying to talk. And, and the fact that I just had hardware, bones you know, removed, disc insertions, rods, screws, you're gonna feel that, <laughs> you know? So it's better to stay on top of your pain meds, at least for that first week. I did a one week after that experience and then started to you know, slowly calm down, taking out um, one of the opioids and just adding in Tylenol. Um, Let's see what I got in my notes. Yeah, manage the pain. Um, also just listening to my body and not pushing it. I wanted to move, but a lot of people kept telling me, don't take it, don't do this, don't do that. You know, I'm like, well, where are they basing this off of? This is, my body is different. It, everything operates different. I'm not doing anything out of the protocol. I didn't, I came home because they told me to come home. I was getting mixed um, signals as should I move, should I not move? So I decided after day four, to, which I felt much better after day three, getting back in control of the pain, that I, it felt better for me to move, period. 
not long move, very slow movements. I was just moving around the house until I, you know, probably about day four ish, I started venturing out and just doing a little bit outside. But move. It, it, the more you move, the more helpful it, it's going to be for you. I, I know whoever had success stories with it, they all say the same thing. Move around, you know, carefully, methodically, use your cane, use your walker. I let the walker go after, you know, the second or third day, but um, just listen to your body. Don't overdo it, but do move it. Um, and I had another bad day, which was probably like day six. Again, it was med related where I tried to come off with some of the muscle relaxers. And that was just a like a drawstring type of a feeling where it felt like your muscles were just so tight because your body is going through all these different physical changes and muscles working in ways they haven't worked. And that muscle ache and muscle cramping is there as well. So, you know, just kind of just roll with the pain management. Um, and then just learning from little mistakes like, you know, try to hold no bending, lifting, twisting. That's there for a reason. I remember my daughter was standing on the chair and she almost fell off and my body just reacted. And I went forward and I thought I was going to just throw up. It was so much pain there. But all in all, I can say in these two weeks, it has been such a blessing. I've walked pretty much every day, twice a day, doing about anywhere between, I hate, you know, three to 5,000 steps, sometimes more, sometimes less. And it's all just doing things that I'm comfortable with doing very carefully, very slowly. Um, today I did just over a quarter of a mile, 0 0.36 miles. Um, I find out that's like equivalent to like six football fields. And it took me 18 minutes to do, you know? It's just basically walking to one end and the other of my street. I was completely comfortable doing it. No pain in my back. None of that pain exists to this day that I had prior since I had the surgery. And I thank Dr. Vincent for that and the team. I've had zero of those pains that I had prior to the surgery. Some you know, nerve irritation from retracting the spinal cord, sure. Um, some, you know, definitely the, the surgery pain itself, but I'm healing up really fast. No stitches, no um, staples. It's just two little incisions on the side. Um, I've been moving around, following the rules, just rest. And uh, I'll probably do another video on, I'll make one for the pre-op stuff because I think that's, that's truly helping to benefit why I feel the way I do today. And then some key things, I might do a short one on some of the key elements that really, really helped during this phase, especially like in between drugs like this, ice, um, just things I have that, that help the process along. And I'll do another video on that. So guys, I'm just saying this whole process, this whole two weeks for me has truly been mind-blowing, eye-opening. Yes, some discomfort, nothing that wasn't manageable. Um, only had two days that was on that higher end level of being painful. And the rest was just, I've had worse pain for sure prior surgery. And a lot of it I'm just now managing now just with the Tylenol and muscle relaxers. So again, my procedure, I don't know how or what to compare it to. I don't know if this is a good timeline, bad timeline. But as of right now, I feel like I'm doing really well, pain-free from anything prior surgery and healing quickly, getting better every day. Um, the more I move, the more I feel better of whatever the, the surgery pain is. So minimally invasive, if you can have that procedure and the doctors are skilled with it, they recommend it, I 100% say go that route. I have no regrets. I just feel, I feel better now than I have in I don't, uh, th the entire two years for sure, and probably even longer. And I'm fully confident that I will be able to get back to so normalcy for the first time and return back to golf and things like that. Cause they, they all said that I shouldn't have a problem with that. So I'm just being patient, taking my time, not rushing anything, but this is what my body is doing. So I feel great and you know, hopefully this helps whoever is 
watching. This was my surgery day and two-week uh, post-op follow-up. I'm sure there's a lot of things in there I'm missing, but I'm already at 20 minutes. So, all right. Thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully this helps.